previously on Sailing Into Freedom. Organizing everything for the big trip. We're full of cans, I'm taking all the, um, the paper because unfortunately when I was trying to pack everything uh, a can has had exploded so pfft, black beans so the smell was and the color was great too so I'm taking the labels because I realized uh, it prompt to get the humidity and start rotting and help it out so I'm taking everything from the old ones, the new ones uh, organizing everything for Cuba and we'll, this will be for until we get to Cuba and Cuba so probably three four months of cans right the day is still far from over and it's half past ten I'm cooking our dinner and food to take on the trip so we don't have to get seasick and going inside Peter uh, is checking over there the weather let's see what is Found out. Okay, we've got a uh, northerly that's coming in less than a week, um, so we have to hit the Caymans. So we've got to go now. Margarita is like a little dynamo. She's cleaned every part of that boat. Well, I still have to go and put some more things inside so we don't have to get up so early. <laughs> We're going to have some tomato beans, rice, hummus for the tree, but I'm going to cut some vegetables. We got to bed at about 2.30 and woke up at 6am. There was still so much to do. I got a lot! Oh my balls. Well, it's a beautiful morning up the mark. Alright, now let's get this up because I have no faith in this b &G equipment whatsoever. I'm going to put this one up and We'll just rely on this and come on down. Yep. My balls, my balls. Kingdom for my balls. Oh. My harness, I think, is for girls because my balls ended up doing flies eyes. If you don't know what flies eyes is, best not to try and imagine that. You'll have nightmares. Main jib goes on and all the gear from the apartment was also loaded back on too. All by Margarita, Go. the little dynamo. It yep. was a mission. Thank you, Cliff! We don't quite know if the wind generator works yet. Uh, last night, I think we got 0.2 amps out of it. Um, but, you know, we're in the trees and in Monk's boat, so it's not the best breeze. He's hoping! Absolute relief. Took a long time, but we are off around midday. A bit late, we may still get those strong winds on our second night. Oh well, we'll just have to HTFU. I was going to give this joker a run for his money, but then I remembered the most important collision regulation in the book. Might is right. So I let him win. Well, the whirly gig's working. Who would have thought? Clean wrapping our veggies so they last all the way until the Caymans. Yeah, we bought veggies. We bought a lot of fruit too, like heaps of fruit. I mean, pineapples, 25 cents each. Poor pores, 30 cents each. Man, passion fruit, it's just cheap. Um, so we got a whole heap, so hopefully it'll last. It probably won't last. It'll probably only give, give us a week just to get to the Caymans. But um, the beetroot and carrots, um, hopefully we'll get a month out of it and that'll last us into Cuba. Um, Cuba's a bit difficult, we've heard, of getting um, vegetables. Although, I'll trust beautiful Margarita's wonderful Spanish and her determined eye. I'm sure we'll get everything we need. Right, love?
Yeah. Okay, clean it up. Glorious sailing conditions. Bye bye, Cartagena. We're doing more than six knots. It's a westerly, which is bloody great. Northerly, you get, and not normally you get um, strong northerlies. We had nor'easter last night, 40 knots, 45. That's what happens around here. You'll get 15 to 20 during the day, and then it can go really high at night. Uh, we'll probably get clobbered tonight, even though we got a westerly, but not as much as the last couple of nights. Uh, it was a really, really tight um, morning to get us out of there. Uh, would have liked to have a day off, but we just didn't have the time. We've got this northerly coming, uh, north front coming through the Caymans next week, and I want to have a day up my sleeve just in case something bad happens. Well, it is this vlog, so... Never felt tomorrow closing in this fast. Oh, I guess time's in a rush. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back. How's the captain? How much fruit have we got? I thought you said we have more inside. We sorted it. Can get a drift. We have plenty of food. The only drawback is you'd be adrift with me for many, many, many weeks without any other company. That sometimes can be a problem. And there's the rich part of Cartagena. Bye bye. We never actually went there. We went to the poor people's place. We have a problem. This is the third time we have water out from the bilge. Time to find that leak. Well, the bilge alarm is still working, that's a good thing. The trouble is that there is more water here than ever before. Something is wrong. And here the salt water pump is partially on. There's a leaky pipe, that's an easy fix. All right, problem solved. Well, as you can see, the wind has dropped. We're now under four knots uh, and wind speed's about six. So we've got a bit of a problem and I'm going to explain to you how I do my, uh, or how I plan the route with respect to the weather. We don't have any, uh, we don't have the resources for predict wind. So basically I get on the free version and I look for five or six days in advance. Memorize what's happening with the wind and then I construct a, um, a plan from that. So here goes. We can't sail a straight line from Cartagena to the Caymans. There are reefs in the way. We could go up Roslyn Channel here, but it would bring us uncomfortably close to Nicaragua and Honduras and the Gordo Bank, a place known for pirate activity. So it's best to go this way, between Bajo Nuevo and Pedro Bank. There's usually a strong wind band off Cartagena, extending up to 150 mile offshore. It is common to have gale force winds, even winds up to 50 knots, especially at night. But our weather window has predicted winds maximum 30 knots for us tonight. A brief respite before they come back with full fury the next night. It was our time to go. So our start was dictated by this strong band of wind. But to complicate matters, there is a strong cold front coming from the north due to hit the Caymans on Wednesday or Thursday. A quick calculation tells me it is possible to do the 650 miles in four and a half days. That's averaging six knots. It is possible, but we need to be sailing well and get close by Tuesday morning because usually the prefrontal conditions before the cold front are light winds. Nothing is ever certain, so let's just do it and sort out any problems along the way. I just thought I'd stop right there and give you my two cents, possibly one and a half cents worth of advice. Uh, this weather window I've heard talked ad nauseum almost to the point that it's become a religion. People uh, on their tablets at the cafe trying to work out the best sailing conditions and it seems to me everyone's trying to chase 10 to 15 knots. Uh, which 
kind of is absurd a bit because it only starts getting fun at around 30 knots, people, and it really isn't that bad. And I think what happens is people um, at the start, they're a bit new, they get a boat and they get there with the window and they get away with it and so they haven't really experienced anything bad and then they do it again and uh, they get away with it and the fear actually is building because you haven't been clobbered. I mean, you're going to get clobbered. And when I say clobbered, I mean, it's really not that bad. If it's so bad, just heave to and just go down below. The point is, your fear is going to grow and it's better to be clobbered earlier when you're younger and you'll get over it and then sailing will be more of a pleasure and there won't be this little knot in the bottom of your stomach going, oh no, what if something bad happens? Because it's really not that bad. So my advice is don't wait for the perfect weather window. I mean, you could be waiting for a long time. It's not going to happen. And 10 to 15 knots is kind of boring. I mean, yeah, sure, get clobbered in increments, 30, 40, and then 50. Don't go to the 50 straight up. It might be a little bit of a bother. But it really isn't that bad. And as I said before, if you're in real trouble, just heave to. From hearing the forecast, I'm heading for this star about 20 miles east of Bajo Nuevo. Because the winds are basically from the east, I'm going to try and push east of this line whenever I can. If I have east up my sleeve, I can spend it later on. But the first part of the trip out of Cartagena, I'm not expecting to get east of this line at all. With a predicted 30 knots from the nor'east, I will likely be downwind of the planned route here. But I'm not worried because as I sail further north, the winds are going to become more easterly, allowing me to cross this line eventually. There is Bajo Nuevo and I want to be 20 miles upwind of it just in case because we'll be arriving Sunday night just when the predicted 30 knots nor'east squalls are due to arrive. This will give me enough space just in case something breaks and I have to go downwind. But something completely different has occurred. I took advantage of the light nor'westerly and strange current and sailed seemingly in the wrong direction to the northeast instead of the northwest. Well, it's been a very easy day sailing. Uh, we were very fortunate. We got a westerly uh, out of Cartagena. Normally, you get really strong nor'easterlies or northerlies. Uh, so I took the opportunity. I ran up the coast. So we got 20 miles now uh, up our sleeve. So that'll make it easier when we get the nor'easters closer to Jamaica. We'll be able to trade them for a bit of comfort. So uh, very, very happy about that. Within 10 minutes, the wind has gone from norwest to nor'east, and we are now heading to Bajo Nuevo and back on course. What can this 20 mile up wind do for us? What you're going to see is not exactly mathematically accurate, but it's good enough. If we look at a typical 120 mile sailing day and you have 20 miles of east, in order to get to the same spot, that means your sailing angle can be up to 10 degrees further off the wind. So instead of sailing at 38 degrees to windward, you're now at 48, and 48 is a picnic compared to 38. So with that piece of luck, our sailing days over the next two days will be so much easier. Of course, I haven't done it all alone. I've had the expert sailing experience from the beautiful Margarita. I shall be a bit quiet. Good morning. The seasickness looks as about to say and keep with me along the trip, which is not funny. Been puking. But last night uh, was pretty good. We averaged between seven to um, eight knots. The wind was reaching, would be oscillating between 17 and 22. Peter wanted to, wanted to reduce sail, but I said, no, 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 let it be. I feel good, it's safe, the wind is great. Let's cover as much ground as we can. Aha, 
uh, looks like we might get our asses kicked just yet. Our weather window was smaller than I thought, more like a toilet weather window. Let's take a look at the strong wind band, and we are about here, so we need to cover about 80 miles before dark when the wind really kicks in. So we need to get as far north and away from the band as possible. The worst thing that can happen though is that we get smashed around for a bit and lose some of the 20 miles, so I'm not really worried. I just realised why we're not getting so much power from the um, solar panels. The wind generator's new, we're getting about 2 to 4 amps there at this speed. But I forgot to clean the solar panels when we left the yard, so we cleaned everything else, all the other unimportant stuff, but I didn't do that. So what was an easy job in the yard or on the wharf, now I'm going to have to do now. Far, her out. So here goes. I better be careful with the wind generator, otherwise I may never play the guitar again. Well, not that I ever could. That damn F chord kept on getting in the bloody way. Margarita said use a clean rag, but my undies are good enough, I reckon. Well, too late. So what's it like being out in the middle of the ocean or sea and you cannot see any land and you haven't seen any land for a long time. Well, I think it's awesome. It's very relaxing. Believe it or not, the day actually goes quite quickly and you just basically daydreaming away, looking at the waves, looking at the swell with the wind in your face. Nothing but you having to rely on yourself against good old mother nature. And I think it's a wonderful free feeling that you have. But unfortunately, I don't think Margarita gets to appreciate it that much, do you, sweetheart? Well, until to the face I start getting nauseous, it's quite pleasant because you feel the serenity and you're comfortable. But then it kicks in and it just starts being very uncomfortable and it's, then it becomes like awful. You don't want to be in a place that you actually would like to enjoy, but your body just goes against all of it and doesn't like it. But I think you actually handle it quite well. There's a lot of video when it looks like Margaret is okay and she's fine, but she's still nauseous and she's just soldiering on. It's just that she's not puking at that <laughs> point in time because there's nothing left. But it's an amazing feeling people just be out there and you see nothing but blue all around you. It's an awesome thing and everyone on this planet ought to experience that at least once in their life. Time to get some fluid into margarita, and the best way, I reckon, is fruit. Fruit salad for a couple of days here. Now, how did she sneak in there? I'm amazed, people, simply amazed. And you are probably thinking the same thing. How is it that she can wrap her arms so far around herself? I can barely touch my sides, let alone my back. I could have potatoes growing on my back for all I know. I thought you might all like to look at our progress on the chart plotter. How good is that, people? Okay, I'll go back. I'd like to say how good I am at sailing. I mean, 0.1 under wind strength? Come on, people, how good is that? From looking at the conditions, I think the repaired winds transducer is not quite giving an accurate wind speed. I reckon it's about 10 to 20% out, but at least we have something, especially at night. It's our um, second night. The shift has been pretty good. Um, we're doing between seven and eight knots, and the wind is oscillating between 12 and 14. We have a beautiful full moon to lighten our path. It's 4 a.m. now. It's time to change shifts. Peter is about to come and take his spot. What time is it? Uh, 4:15. 4.15? 4 4.15, yeah. You just did 9 hours and 15 minutes. Well, I'm better at 9. My goodness. 
I slept, people! Well, it's my shift now. I've just checked uh, Margarita's record. She did almost 70 miles in nine and a quarter hours. I asked her, what'd you do with the sails? She said, nothing. Well, nobody does nothing like tweaking the sails like Margarita. So uh, we're well and truly outside the uh, Cartagena bad zone. So we're sweet. It's uh, 12 to 15 apparent and we're doing seven to eight knots. We are flying, there's virtually no seas whatsoever. It's not slowing us down at all, it's unreal. Uh, looking at the forecast though, we're probably gonna get clobbered a bit um, just south of Jamaica. Yeah, Southeastern Jamaica, reasonable proxy for conditions clear from Houston. Easily 20, gusting 25 maybe 30 miles an hour. So from Sunday night, uh, through to Monday. Unfortunately, that's the time we're going to get between uh, Pedro and Nuevo Bank. Now, it's not a, a, a small gap at all, but it's going to be Nor'east pushing us against Nuevo Bank. I'm going to try and give it 20 mile um, distance, but who knows in squalls. So, I would have preferred to do that during the day, but, well, we can't do anything um, about that. So. I wish I could show you, I mean we've got almost a full moon, the conditions are just magnificent, it's just awesome, it's just friggin awesome, it's the nicest sailing we've ever had, it's unreal, so easy. This is chick sailing at its best, I'm a bit of a pussy when it comes to nighttime sailing. I tried to reduce sail uh, last night because we were a bit worried about um, the um, 40 knots. Margarita goes, no we're sweet. And we were, it's hard for me to sleep, I was bouncing around out of the bunk, but we were flying along and um, she probably put an extra 20 mile on in her shift. So good on her. All right, I'm signing off. I've got to keep a look out. Holidays broken. So last night before I went to bed and this did the number one. I couldn't pump it. The, the handle uh, is stuck so the pin that usually stays there even all until the top and it jammed it doesn't do anything. Alright, okay. So now always I'm on the job. I can feel it just moving, but I reckon I'll break it if I force it. Margarita, we gotta go over the side and have the nice air conditioned comfort of going to the toilet in the breeze. What do you reckon? You happy with that? You can also do it in the bucket and I can go throw it over. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. We were gonna replace the toilet, but um, we didn't, because we didn't. This is a taste for what things that are come tonight. Uh, the forecast is spot on as per usual. Good on you, Chris Parker. Um, this is the third one this morning. Nothing great, only going to about 10 or 12 knots uh, above the usual wind. But it's supposed to get worse tonight and tomorrow, just when we're going through the passage. So what I've done is we're still a bit east of our course, which is good, just in case something nasty happens. And um, we just have to negotiate that passage, well, at night. This is still occurring. Mm. It's most likely my dripless shaft seal. Ours is a drippy, dripless shaft seal. One of a kind, people. Perfectly suited for my non-optimally working boat.
mission accomplished. Now back to sleep. Well, I'm a little wet. We had a squall just dump on it. I didn't want to reduce sail, so we just ran with it for a bit. But I think that's uh, par for the course for the next day. cells all over the place we've been dodging them today not too many but tonight and tomorrow that's where expected um, we're more than halfway bloody great what do you think Woo! so um, we're both gonna be on watch because uh, we're gonna have to reduce our uh, we need Margarita wants to get there in as quick a time as possible because uh, she's still feeling crook so we're gonna try and do it in two days we'll uh, Tonight's going to be a bit difficult with all the squalls because, um, well, it's just going to be a bit difficult. All right, you ready? Yeah, my good. Okay, that seems to be the end of that squall line. Uh, hopefully that's it. Um, we had Chris Parker two days ago, so maybe it's changed. I mean, it would seem to me that he said it was going to go for a day. Uh, we had one dump on us right as we were passing the reef. I don't know how that would be possible to coordinate. But thank you, Lord. Top stuff. So after that big squall, there was nothing. I thought, hello, Chris Parker, you've got it wrong. Gee, that never happens. And it completely opened up. Starlight, moonlight, no clouds at all. And I went, top stuff, Lord. You didn't pick up on my sarcasm before. And you did that for me. You're all right in my book. But then an hour later, storm, tempest. We were fighting for our lives, people. Ah, oh, squall upon squall. There was no respite. We were in danger of losing the... No. Sorry, people. I'm becoming like the other blogs, aren't I? We had a few squalls. We got through it. It was kind of fun. But you'll have to watch that next week. Don't forget to press the like, the subscribe, and the bell button. And drop our name as much as possible and then write back and let me know how many you've done because there's a few of you you've got a competition going top stuff people the vlog is saved and it's all thanks to you well done